surprised you finally excited that uh, we're only a few days away from the game instead of uh, months away from the game? Oh, man, very excited. Um, and it just moves so fast. That's just the thing. Um, you know, I can remember counting down the days that was uh, listed in the weight room about, you know, first it was 200 days, then it was 100, then it was 80. And now we're, you know, four or five days away from the game. So very excited about it. Um, you know, what a what an awesome way to start off a senior season. So it's going to be fun. When you talked about distractions, um, specifically the college game day, all the hype that's going to be right. um, around the game on Saturday. Can you talk about what you're going to do on Saturday? Um, just walk us through uh, a day for you so you won't be distracted. Um, it's pretty much been how I've just been pre preparing this week. Um, don't really watch too much uh, ESPN these days. It is a lot of things um, happening, a lot of uh, preseason hype, this and that, all the different talk about you know, certain awards. Very grateful for it, very cool, but at the same time, um, you have to go out there and perform. So for me, it's all about going out there and just trying to perform to my best of capabilities. Um, I think that in due time, everything will take care of itself. But, um, you know, you just hear so many different stats about this weekend. 300,000-plus people in Clemson, I think probably supposedly the largest game in Clemson history. So it's just so much, so much, so many different aspects and things getting thrown at you that you have to kind of just sit down and understand what you're here for. Uh, Chad said the other day that he didn't think that at any time last season, Sammy really got into the the norm, sort of the full rhythm, right. the way he was the freshman. Did it feel that way to you? Um, yeah, I, there was times where it was. You know, he was performing really well, but it just wasn't up to his capabilities. It wasn't up to his standard. And it was just kind of hard for him to get in the groove. Um, you know, he had, he had missed about four or five games. And, and during the course of a season, if you're not within every game, you kind of can get lost in it sometimes. So he did come out there and perform well with us when he, worked, when he was out there. But I just expect a totally different monster from this game this season. And uh, it's just going to be fun working with him. Faces on Georgia's defense. Right. How hard is it to sort of, you know, watch film and, and get a feel for what you can expect? Um, it's a little different, a little difficult at times, but at the same time, you have to kind of go look and and figure out what you can expect in certain situations. And one of the things to do is try to get prepared for every situation possible. Um, you know, that's just one of the things, especially when you're a veteran guy, you have to kind of understand that. Regardless of the situation, anything can be thrown at you, especially in this type of game. Um, and they do have a lot of young guys out there, a lot of guys who, who haven't played in a lot of different games. But, um, you know, they got great players out there. They got great coaches. So I expect them to come out there and perform well. But um, one of the things that, that's an advantage for us is that we have a lot of veteran guys, and we have to go out there and perform like this. So you don't look at their, you know, their secondary issues or their youth in the secondary and say, well, I can – you know, I can go 40 for 49 for 400 yards or something like that. Um, you know, not exactly. I mean, because you just never know. Um, the games when I say I'm going to go out there and throw for this many yards and that many touchdowns, it never works out that way. I'm telling you, I'll be like, I'm going to go throw five touchdowns, throw one, and it's just like, what are we doing? So you just got to go out there and uh, just go play your game. I think when you, when you go out there and, and not put certain things and, and not try to uh, put certain aspects in perspective, I mean, you just got to – go out there and do it. Um, once you do that, I think you can get in the feel for the game, you get in the flow of the game, and uh, you can have anything you want. Uh, last December's practices were seemingly very physical. Right. Same with, with August. What, what kind of lessons do you think this team has learned in terms of mentality that you're going to have when you go against uh, some of the, I guess, heavyweights? Um, you know that every play matters. Um, and you know you're not going to be perfect every play. You're not going to win every play. But it's all about the game. Um, you know, it's a pretty long game, um, and you just have to go out there and try to take advantage of every opportunity you get because, you know, in games like these, you know, there's only a f few players here and there that makes the big differences in the game. So when those plays uh, are there to be made, you got to go out there and take it. So, Taj, you've obviously proven – you guys have proven you can succeed against SEC teams. Mm -hmm. But is there still any part of you that says, you know, this is another opportunity – for us to show the ACC is on par or closing in on what the SEC is and what you know what they are what they're about. I mean, to an extent, I think it sh it gives us opportunity to show where Clemson is is that um, in any not in any fashion do we go out there and try to 
uh, put on for the ACC or try to represent it. I mean, I think it comes with the logo and it comes with the with the stature. And regardless of how we want it, I think it, it happens that way. But we we'll just go out there and, and try to perform to our standards, to our capabilities. Um, and, you know, we just let everybody else kind of do the ACC, SEC talk. Um, we feel like we can compete with any team in the country. We feel like we're one of the premier teams in the country. So we just got to go out there and uh, continue to perform. Do you know Aaron Murray personally and maybe just your thoughts on, on him as a quarterback? Um, yeah, I do know him personally. Um, we got a chance to do a lot of different things in high school. We got a chance to hang out a little bit while we were in school. And um, really good quarterback. Um, one of the best college quarterbacks in the game. Um, throws a really good ball, really accurate. And uh, it's going to be a challenge for our, our defense. Um, and uh, I just feel like those guys will be ready for any opportunity presented. Um, fortunately, I was in a position to be supposedly one of the top college quarterbacks. So, I mean, I think that in, in that sense, those guys will be somewhat prepared. But at the end of the day, you got to go out there. And when those lights come on, you got to perform. You and Aaron out there and the wealth of offensive weapons you have on both sides, do you expect this to be a high-scoring game, a shootout kind of game? Sorry. Um, not really sure what to expect. Um, I think it's just one of those things that when you step on the field, you just have to be ready for whatever it is. Um, you know, we are a team, but our job as offense is to score as many points as it takes to win the game. So if we have to score 10 points, if we have to score 30, 40 points, I mean, whatever it takes to win, we're going to try to do that to our best abilities. But um, at the end of the day, we just got to go out there and continue to perform the way we're capable of performing. When you're going up against a quarterback like Aaron, do you, do you have a tendency to want to – outshine them because, you know, it's like last year with the NC State game, mm -hmm. you guys were going back and forth. You know, Glenn, it seemed like. I mean, do you kind of get that where that competitive spirit, you can't go against each other, but you try to outperform each other? Oh, always, always. Um, especially, I mean, when you got a, a guy who is, is so highly talented um, and plays at a high caliber, you want to go out there and perform better than the uh, opposing position. And that's just uh, one of the things that comes with competing. Um, you know, you want to be the best quarterback that day. You want to be the best quarterback that game. And I think that just comes with the territory. But, um, you know, I definitely want to go out there and be the best quarterback that day. I know you're meeting with Chad during breaks, you know, with the defenses on the field. And all. Do you ever get a chance where you get to go watch the other guy play, the other quarterback play? Um, somewhat, somewhat. I kind of look over from, um, on the board, but I definitely keep up with the guys when we're when we're competing, um, whether it was EJ or Glennon or any of these guys. Um, and I'm sure it would be the same this game. But, Again, um, I think our defense will have an opportunity to do a great job. Um, it's going to be a challenge again, but um, I just got to go out there and perform. The tight end area has been a really productive part of your offense. You right. obviously had a lot of injuries there. Are you concerned that you may have to go a different route that was the game plan Saturday, maybe the first couple of games, because of just a lack of depth and, and experience in that position? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think that everything that we want to do as a program and as an offense, we can do with, with the guys we have out there. Um, regardless of of the depth, you know, we just have to go out there and perform. And that's why we condition so that we can be ready in any situation possible. Um, again, we don't have a lot of depth at the position right now, but I think that, you know, Stan and, and Daryl and whoever is out there are ready to go out there and compete. They've been in a situation, they played in these big games, and uh, you got to go out there and be ready for it. You know, Andre, be behind your next year, mm -hmm. what's your take on this running back by committee situation? Um. I'm really confident about the situation. Um, Roderick McDowell is one of those guys, especially coming to his senior season, who's been waiting for our opportunity, been waiting for the moment. And I feel like he's going to take it by the horns and run with it. Um, you know, this what better way to start your first game as a senior, and, and especially in the position that he's in, to have an opportunity to go out there and, and, and leave a mark and, and put his stamp on things. So, um, again, I feel like he's probably the most explosive player on this offense. Um, especially in open field. So I'm um, excited for him. I know he's pumped. He's uh, amped up about it. I just can't wait to see what he does on game day. How big is it for you and Coach Morris as a play caller to have four out of five stars back on the offensive line? I imagine that's a pretty calming thing for you. Oh, very big. Um, and that's just one of the things that's really good about it. You know, you got guys who've been battle tested, who've been in those positions, who knows what to expect. And uh, when you got guys like out there, it makes your job that much easier. Again, um, you know, all those guys are veterans. We have a lot of veteran guys on this offense. And at the end of the day, you got to go out to perform like vets. Um, that's what we expect. That's what the players expect. And uh, we just got to hold each other accountable out there on the field. Todd, you've played in a lot of big games here in Death Valley. Mm -hmm. Where do you think this one ranks in your career games that you've played here? Um, I think just looking from outside in, definitely one of the top three games. 
um, that I've been a part of, regardless of playing or not. So, um, you know, it's playing at home, man, it just makes it that much better. Playing in front of this crowd, um, just looking at, you know, I walked into the building a little early yesterday and just looking at the excitement, um, you know, whether it's how crowded downtown is, the jerseys being sold, you got the lines for tickets from the students. I haven't seen Death Valley um, look like this, and uh, I can imagine what it's going to look like on game day. Todd, you look like a man on a mission against LSU, maybe more focused than I've ever seen. Was that a thought process of this might be my last game and I'm going to go out on on top? Was it the opponent? And then how do you bring that focus to the Georgia game? Um, I think it's just going out there and, and me trying to, to play within myself. I'm not trying to do too much. Um, knowing that I got guys out there that's capable of making plays and just going out there and just playing within the game plan and trying to execute it. Um, you know, I had thought that it, that might have been my last game, but I don't think it had any effect on the way I played. Um, and, again, in, in a situation like this, and, you know, you can look at how big the stature of this game is. And, you know, a lot of people think that it's pressure, but really the pressure is really just the ones you apply to yourself. So, um, again, I was fortunate to be able to play in big games. Um, and this is just another test for us. That trying to do too much, um, and put, do you think you tried to do too much against South Carolina? Um, I think that I just didn't play with them myself. I think in, in that game, um, we had opportunities to make plays. We just didn't make them and uh, just came out kind of flat. Um, and you know it is a long game, so you can't let one play lead to another or that loss lead to another. So um, for us, it's just all about there and just – after the game, man, just kind of soaking in, understanding what we did, and just trying to make corrections off of it. Todd, the fact that Chad Kelly can even go out there and right. press, what can you say about that four and a half months later? Uh, unbelievable. Um, I haven't seen anything like that, uh, especially, I mean, just coming, just experiencing that injury and uh, just the way that him and Sam Cooper um, are fighting to get back. I mean, you can just tell how competitive they are in that aspect, in that nature. So, we're expecting these guys back to play anytime within the next few weeks. And, uh, you know, they're just doing a great job of rehab. They're doing a great job in the meeting rooms and uh, just doing a great job of leading as well. Um, you know, it's good to have Chad in the room, especially out in the field as well, because, you know, he can tell me what he sees. Um, we can kind of compare things. Same way with Cole and Schuster and Donnie McElveen, who might as well be um, – Chad Morris' uh, protege. So it's just one of those things that when you got a, a group of collective guys out there, it's, it's great to have them around. Um, Sam Cooper does a great job, an outstanding job of helping those those younger tight ends out. Um, the Jordan Leggett's and the stands and the J.D. McCullers and just giving his advice and his expertise on it. So really good to have those guys out there with us. Taj, this Georgia Clemson series goes way back and there's been some a lot of close and memorable games. Right. How does it feel to have a chance to kick off your senior campaign by leaving your mark on this series? Um, I think it's great. Again, I I wasn't here when uh, the last time Clemson played Georgia or just the history of the of the game in itself. I heard it was just this super huge rivalry back in the day. Um so again, I you know, they set these schedules up in advance, so um Somebody had to be looking down and was like, this is going to be the premier game. So it's going to be a fun one. Um, and, again, anytime I step on this field, I want to leave a mark. I want to leave a legacy. And hopefully it's the last one in this game. Because you have been in a lot of big games, what kind of advice are you giving to the younger players on the team? Um, that in the end of the day, it's just football. Um, <clears throat> regardless of, you know, the crowd noise or, you know, when those guys get off the bus for Tiger Walk and just see how crazy it's going to be. At the end of the day, you just got to go out there and play. Um, they came to see you play for a reason because you're capable, because you're able, and that when you step on that field, you just got to go out there and let your light shine. Is that is that a similar approach to the fact that this is an opener, but yet, you know, it's not an ACC game. It's There's a long way to go after this game, win or lose. Oh, for sure, and that's just one of the things. This game, regardless of the outcome, regardless of the situation, doesn't make or break this team. And... uh you know, I think a lot of people are treating it like this is the only game of the season, but it's a long season after this game. Um, so I, I just got to make sure that these guys understand how quickly the season can go by. So um, in that sense, we just got to go out there and perform. Um, regardless of the situation, uh, win or lose, we just got to get ready for the next week and continue to keep the eyes on the prize.
You say you don't watch, you're not watching a lot of ESPN, so mm -hmm. you didn't see that clowny nightmare. I did see that, though. You did. No, that got presented to me Which in the locker the room, for had, sure. Who looked kind of like you. you know? Oh, man, you know, I mean, it's, he had a, he wore a gray, a gray white beard. I don't even wear those things, man. So <laughs> they, uh, they could have did a better job with that one, but I mean, it was what it was. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, you know, they had Aaron with the slick hair. I was like, oh, man, so at least my guy had a helmet on, man. That's all I can say on that one. I don't want to rehash too much something that happened late last November, but you said y'all came out flat in, mm -hmm. in that game. And I'm wondering, relative to a game of this magnitude, similar deal, What, what can you explain that, maybe elaborate on how that happened, um, just looking back? Um, yeah, it was kinda, it's actually kind of hard to explain because, you know, in those situations, you normally think that you would just be super, like, jacked up for a game but for whatever reason I think myself as a player I think that you know just in general I mean just the way the team kind of dealt with the situation it just felt like we just didn't come out um, extremely ready to play um, you know and I think as an offense man you you kind of expect to to get a bunch of opportunities to go out there and make plays um, and in that game, it just didn't happen that way. So it was important for us to capitalize on all the possessions that we had, on all the plays that we had, and we didn't do that. So, you know, they got, did a great job of, of chewing the clock and, you know, presenting certain things to us, and uh, we just didn't go out there and handle it well. Anybody got anything else? Okay, we'll move to the pause. So we are going back to the pause. <laughs>